welcome back guys and welcome to another episode of Connecticut Angler. We are getting pretty damn close to autumn here. Overnight weather has been cool enough for a long enough amount of time that most of our small streams have finally cooled off to the point that uh, I feel comfortable going back out and, and hitting some of these small streams and targeting trout again. Temps have really gone down in the water. This is where uh, the next stream is. I uh, researched this in the maps, did not realize I would have to scale down in a gorge that's like, I don't know, 60 feet deep. So this is going to be kind of tricky. So uh, I'm going to put the uh, camera back in the chest mount here and try to get down there without busting my ass. Oh, lots of poison ivy. Oh man, don't want to fall on that. Here we go. Oh gosh. Oh no. Oh boy. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this. Oh shit. Oh, that's, oh God, those prickers are big. Well, I'm glad that I opted to put my waders on. I'll tell you what, still a lot of steep stuff to traverse here, but at least I'm through the brush. Oh, okay. Woo. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Not bad. I mean, that well, actually, no, I just said not bad. Actually, that was bad. That was, that was not good. That was not cool, but we're through it, we're past it, and the river is in sight. Oh, look at this, guys. Just beautiful out here, wow. Crystal clear water. Even, I mean, look down here, it's this amazing looking pool. Lord. All right, I gotta start down here with this pool. I mean, it just looks incredible. Uh, I've got the three weight here. I'm going to start out with the dry dropper rig. We'll see how that goes. I may switch over to a streamer, possibly. It kind of depends on, on the sort of water I'm finding and I'm just going to feel it out. So I'm kind of considering this first uh, outing of trout fishing for autumn. Let's make it a fruitful one. Yeah, got some nice drifts. There's no takers through here, for as nice as this spot looks. Interesting little pool coming up here. Well guys, so far, and not a single sign of life. All right, kind of a neat looking spot we have here. We have a pool that emerges from kind of a narrow little cascade and opens up to uh, this kind of calmer area with maybe a cutout down here around the from the tree roots. Let's see if we can find anything here. Well, in truth, guys, this is not the uh, not the start that I was banking on. Uh, I really, really thought that we were going to get into some fish by now. Uh, I'm sure I've cut the footage down here, but I've been on the river about 45 minutes now. Hit a number of spots that looked really, really excellent. Um, so it's not as if, you know, my issue here is trying to find quality water or at least what looks like quality water at face value. That's, that's certainly not a problem. Just having a problem finding any fish. Check this out, guys. Just want to show you this real quick. You know, in a lot of discussions, it sort of comes up, um, you know, why do trout eat worms? Why do trout eat earthworms? It's just such an unnatural food. Like, how would they ever even get an earthworm? Well, in fact, sorry, let me talk to you directly. I mean, in fact, earthworms wind up in streams all the time. Now, why do they wind up in streams? I'm not 100% certain, but I have quite literally caught brookies um, and, and found that they had a worm in their gullet that they had eaten just moments before they, they, they took my offering. Um, and check, check this out. 
And we're, this is on a boulder that's like right next to the stream. Look at this big earthworm. Just crawling around the rock. God knows where the hell it came from. This is just literally nothing but stone. And here's this earthworm just chilling. And you know, you can imagine if somehow he wound up here, it's uh, not a stretch by any means, you know, to think that he would have wound up, you know, somewhere in the water where he would have been eaten. So yeah, earthworms make it into the water all the time. Um, and, and undoubtedly, uh, that is at least part of the reason that trout love earthworms so much. All right, guys, well, I had really, really high hopes for the stream. And at face value, it looks excellent. I mean, it really does. It's a nice gradient on this stream. Lots of boulders, lots of undercut banks, nice shallower areas with cascades interspersed with, with nice pools. At face value, the stream looks fantastic. And yet, like I've said, over the last hour that I've been fishing it, it has appeared to me, the best I can tell, to be barren. And I mean barren. Just no sign of life whatsoever. On a reasonably productive outing, this time of year with the temps being as, um, as suitable as they are for trout, I just would have expected to get into a couple fish by now, or at the very least, see signs of life, have, have flushed fish out of a pool that maybe I didn't hit with the right flies or something. And it just, there's been none of that. So I'm gonna change gears here. I'm gonna leave this stream. Uh, I've scoped out a couple backup streams that I was hoping I wasn't going to have to fall back to, but here we are. Let's climb out of the river gorge, get back to the truck, and head to the next secret stream. Well guys, I'm uh, at one of my fallback streams here. And um, I don't know, I mean, it doesn't look bad. But I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't look a whole lot different than the last stream I was at just a slightly smaller version. Regardless, I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, maybe it is that um, conditions conspired in such a way in this, you know, small constrained watershed that a lot of these fish moved up into kind of the smaller headwater streams. And that's why they weren't in the last stream. It's a possibility. We're not gonna know until we explore that possibility. So let's get out the rod, start heading up the stream, see what we can find. Right, guys we have an area here uh, where these uh, dual culverts dump into a small pool not a bad looking spot It'll be interesting to see if there's any uh, pool trout up here oh. oh okay something bumped it hey that's uh, more of a sign of life than I've than I saw the entire time I was on that last stream so oh. Oh, something bumped it again. I see now whatever it is. It really is like these little like two inch fall fish. Oh. Yeah, that's what it is. Cool that there's a sign of life here, I guess, but uh, there doesn't appear to be any of my target species in here. Okay, we're up above the culvert here. Water looking pretty damn shallow. You know, as you've seen in, in videos from this spring, you know, I had instances where on streams even quite a bit smaller than this one, I was just walloping on, on little brookies that were ferociously attacking the dry dropper. So it's not as if the fact that this stream is small uh, means that it doesn't hold fish. You know guys, I see something kind of jammed to the bottom of this pool, like amidst the rocks that actually looks like maybe a dead brookie. I'm kind of interested to take a look at it because if it is a dead brookie, I mean, that would be a really unfortunate, but it would be kind of just interesting to see if there actually is a brookie that size in here and maybe that'll kind of be a piece of the puzzle as to, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Let's just see if it is a piece of the puzzle. Well, guys, won't you look at that? A dead brookie, not a bad size. It's been dead for a while at the bottom of this pool. The question here is, guys, why? Why is a pretty decent sized brook trout that would have had to be in pretty good habitat to be able to grow that large, 
why is it dead at the bottom of this pool instead of alive at the end of my line? But I mean, I guess we've confirmed that brook trout most certainly live here. And up until, I don't know, it couldn't have been more than a couple weeks ago, this fish would have been alive and well. So, I don't know. Oh, we got a fish. Uh, is this a brookie? Is this a little brookie? No, it's a black nose dace. These little aggressive black nose dace do really well in these small streams. Oh, oh, I think we got a trout here, guys. We got ourselves a brookie. Let's see if we can land it. Come on, buddy. Come on, let's land this one. Let's land him. Yes. Yes. We got ourselves a beautiful brook trout here. Thankfully, we were privileged enough to be able to find a live version of the uh, unfortunately deceased brookie that we bumped into earlier. And boy, what a gorgeous brookie this is. Color's sort of pale, but lots of structure and detail. It was patterning. Just a beautiful wild brookie. All right, guys. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think uh, it, it'll be a surprise for me to tell you that up until we got to the second stream, I was really, really having my doubts about whether or not uh, this outing in general was going to go my way. Then we found that dead brookie uh, a bit further downstream, and that um, at least raised my hopes a little bit. Of course, you know, when, when what you're finding is a dead one, you kind of wonder, well, what's happened here? Hard to say what happened to that dead one, but certainly there are beautiful, healthy, live ones here. And what a privilege it was to catch that beautiful native Connecticut brookie. Pretty small pool that I got out of here. We're looking at water about six inches deep. Um, when that brookie swam back up into that pool, I watched him swim up and he just absolutely vanished uh, amidst kind of the patchwork of sand and rock. So they blend in so, so well. I mean, this isn't, this isn't news. Um, but yeah, you know, that just, it just goes to show that, you know, it doesn't take a lot of water, as you guys know. Uh, so let's, uh, let's push forward and see if we can't nab ourselves another brookie, though. I'm thrilled to have even gotten into that one. <laughs> let's see what else we can do. interesting guys you know I kind of hastily glanced at one section of this little stream when I was deciding that it was going to be one of my fallback streams and I really didn't realize there'd be a giant dam on it but so there is the dam has got to be a good uh, I don't know what 10 12 feet maybe even 15 feet Wow, guys. Wow. Let's see if there's anything in here. Got one. Some decent size on it. Yep, rookie. Excellent, excellent. There we go, guys. Similarly pale colors as the last one. Just a gorgeous fish. Let's let him go. Yes. Let's see what else we can do in this little punch pool here. Got another, got another.
Fantastic, another beautiful brookie. Let him go right back in. Got another. This one's a black nose dace. A little bit smaller than the brookies we've been getting. Got one. This fish got some bite. Nice fish. Nice fish. Let's get the net ready. Another beautiful brookie. Not bad. I would say this is pretty close to the largest one of the day. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Gotta love these native brookies, guys. You gotta love it. Well, damn, guys. Three brookies out of that uh, out of that plunge pool. Boy, that changed the trajectory of the day, didn't it? I mean, just the stream in general has changed the trajectory of the day. So we got four brookies to the net now. I'm gonna see if I can't uh, climb up out of this gorge and get around this dam and see what the stream looks like up above it. Um, because I think the likelihood that there's brook trout only below this old dam is pretty low. Now this is a breach dam. I don't expect there to be a pond up above the dam or if there is, it would just be a, a, a small pool. Uh, the, the dam in, in its prime, when it would have been used for a mill, uh, was, it, it looks like, a, boy, I don't know, a good eight to 10 feet higher. So it would have been pounded in a mill pond long ago, but uh, it is breached. So let's get up there and take a look. Very steep gorge wall here. Uh, looks like we can get up to this tree. I think I'll be good. Yeah, so this is all that the mill impounds up above the dam. It's a little tiny pool. But, um, you know, you can see the old dam walls here go significantly higher. So this would have backed up quite a large pond here that would have been, you know, yeah, like I said, probably a good, uh, maybe even 12 feet deep uh, when it was really full to the brim. But uh, of course that would have been, you know, back in the day when water power was king, right? Let's try further up in the run that leads into this pool. Oh, excellent drift. Oh, huge fish just raced up there. Oh my gosh, guys. Huge, huge brookie just raced up to the head of that pool. He was in the bottom of this pool. He didn't go for the dry dropper. Oh, I mean, I guess that could have been a fall fish or something, but I think it was a pretty damn big brookie. Now he's undoubtedly spooked. No way I'm gonna get him to hit anything. Well, that fish was sort of sitting right in the bottom of this pool here. There's sort of like a little pool carved out um, in the bedrock here with one bank of sand on the other side. But it gets about a foot and a half deep. And that fish must have just been kind of sitting in the bottom of that pool. I uh, didn't see fit to take that nymph as it went by. There's several times that I cast up here. Um, yeah, and didn't see him till I walked up almost on top of him and flushed him. Brutal. <laughs> oh, look at that. Another dam. The pool at the bottom of this dam isn't much, unlike the last one. There's a little pocket here. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, I did not expect much. Wow, look at that. There's like an old log cabin. Log cabin, I mean, it's not a log cabin. It's more like a shed, but it looks like a pretty old 
log type construction. Look at this. Wow. Almost like this used to be a pool or something. Look at this. Steps. Huh. Wow, so wild, guys. I sure wonder what this stream used to look like, you know, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 150 years ago. I'm not sure what this would have been exactly. It really does strike me almost like a pool. Not a mill pond, but a pool. But, I mean, there's nothing here. It's not like this like abuts somebody's house or something. Just wild. Well guys, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here at the lost swimming pool. <laughs> when I started out this morning, uh, and when I say it was Secret Stream K, well, I should really keep better track of this. After that first hour of fishing, I was not expecting a whole lot. And I was starting to think, Ugh, maybe this outing is not gonna go as I thought it would. This was uh, my fallback stream. Secret Stream L was just a fallback stream. Um, and boy, did it turn out to be fruitful. Four brookies to the net. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Interesting coloration on, uh, of the brookies on this stream. Sort of pale colored. Um, but what they lacked in vibrant colors, they made up for with beautiful and distinct patterning. Just beautiful native fish. And what a privilege it has been to finally be out here now that the streams are cooling off. And, and uh, boy, I'm looking forward to getting back into trout fishing. Uh, as we continue into autumn because it just seems like it's been forever that I haven't been trout fishing um, You know the streams are warming up a whole lot uh, We had you know temperatures even on the Farmington shooting up um, And and then you know we had a couple episodes with crazy high flows where a lot of streams were almost unfishable Things have finally settled down temperatures have finally cooled off it's gonna be a good season, guys. It's gonna be a really good season. But, hey, I gotta wrap it up here. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, please do hit that thumbs up button, drop a comment, tell me what you liked about it, tell me where you'd like to see me fish, and I will catch you guys next time.